Ted Becker uh, and have Ted talk about tools. Maybe some of the tools you'll need to build with some of these models that we keep talking about. So Ted, I will turn it over to you. I think you're muted. Uh, can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. You see the t-shirt? Yes. Okay. I saw that and I thought, okay, this will be a good opening screen. All right. Well, the emphasis uh, on my presentation tonight <laughs> is going to be um, tools used for building bench work. Um, first off is... Um, the Japanese style pole saw. Uh, these, these saws are, um, they operate on the pull stroke, which is different than a typical American or European style saw. Uh, this has an advantage in that the blade can be very thin. Um, it's also, if you're doing a lot of sawing, it's actually a little easier on the body because you're using you, you can sort of use your whole torso rather than just push with your arm. Um, they come, they're double edged. One edge is a cross cut. The other is rip, rip saw. Um, they come apart so you can pack them in your toolbox. Like if you're gonna go work at a friend's layout or a club layout, something like that. Um, the most common brand is the uh, Vaughn Bear Saw. Um, and I believe both Home Depot and um, Lowe's has it. You can also find them on eBay. Uh, current price form is they're in like, ooh, I like the $35 range. In the middle here is another brand, Marples. Um, I do not remember where I got this. The blade operation is the same. The blades with the Marple and the Vaughn are not interchangeable. And I'll show you a little later how these are quite handy in, in working on bench work and stuff. Uh, this is the... Uh, this is a card that comes with the saw and it just shows um, some of the operations. Okay, um, something that you probably wouldn't consider to be a tool is, are these dowels. Um, these are 5 16th inch dowels. You can buy them at woodworker supply places, uh, um, Lowe's, Home Depot, the big boxes, the hardware stores have them. They're normally used for joints in wood. But what I use them for is when I'm building bench work, um, particularly when I'm cutting plywood, cutting and fitting, is I'll use them for like alignment pins. Um, I use a 5 16 inch drill bit. Um, another tool tip is um, get Brad Point wood drills if you're going to be drilling in wood. They're far superior to a typical uh, twist drill for drilling in wood. The, the spur point, when you locate the center of the hole you want to drill, you just give a little push into the wood and it's not going to wander around on you or anything. Um, these dowels also can be used for reinforcing glue joints. Uh, typically when you're gluing plywood on a riser, you're gluing the plywood against end grain, which is not... Um, the strongest type of joint. So um, 
I usually drill uh, just probably no more than half the five eighths of an inch into the end grain, um, slather a little glue on it and push it in, push the dowel in. And um, that's not going to come apart without ripping up a lot of wood. And then here we show this uh, pull saw flex so I can cut that off flush. Uh, it's so flush that if you wanted to lay cork road bed or something like that over the top of it, you probably would not have to sand it. The other thing about the flexibility of the uh, pull saw is if you're doing rework on your layout and you need to get into a tight space, um, the, the flexibility allows you to get in and in places where you couldn't with a more rigid saw. Uh, in terms of using the dowels for locating pins, you might be tempted to drill a hole, put, put a screw in and, and use that for alignment later. But I know from experience, if you trying to get this piece of wood back in the same place it was and relying on the sharp point of that screw, that it can find a different spot and it's not going to align you as accurately as the as the dowels will. Uh, touch on squares briefly. These are both Harbor Freight versions of the, uh, ooh, I forget what it's called, the quick square or the easy square. Um, what I wanted to point out here is you buy the metal ones. The bottom of the metal one is machined. So it's flat. So it will, the square will stand up and it will also be square vertically. Whereas the plastic one has um, mold, mold relief angle. And I don't know if you can see it down here at the end, but there's a little bit of angle. So if it, it will stand vertically, but it'll wobble. So you, it won't be as accurate a reference in that direction. Uh, this one is, uh, it's a little silly, but um, the 16 foot, the typical 16 foot tape measure is, is to me, it's the perfect size to fit in your hand, fit in the pocket. Um, you can even put this in a shirt pocket. The 25 footer, um, it's just too big. It doesn't fit the pocket well. So... If you're gonna, if you're gonna get just one tape, or you're gonna use your tape a lot as you're working around on your your layout, um, get a 16 footer. Also, um, stick with the name brand. Um, the ones I use the most are are Stanley. Uh, they, if it, if you careful with them, they last forever. Uh, this this Kemalon, it seems to be a good quality. I don't remember where I got it, but um, I, I would still just recommend going with the Stanley. And they're available everywhere. Now, using screws on your layout, I find this device indispensable. It's a drill drive. Um, if if you, if you don't understand the operation that, well, look at this, uh, the lucky way uh, item here. There's a, a body that, that, that chucks into your uh, electric drill, your cordless drill, and it has this insert that slips into the end and it flips over. And it's a pilot drill with a countersink on one end and it's a socket for your screwdriver bit on the other. So when you're working away, um, screwing joists to L girders or, or risers to those joists, um, you drill the hole, you, you pull the insert out, flip it around, and you drive the screw. You can drill a hole and drive the screw in less than a minute. 
and it really speeds up uh, working on bench work. Um, this DeWalt, um, I think I found that on Amazon for about, seems to me it's around $15. Uh, the one I have and used the most is, uh, it has a different brand name on it, but it's, it is the same as this Lucky Way. And while I'm talking about driving screws, um, don't use Phillips. The problem when you're working on bench work is you're working in tight places. You can't get the drill bit aligned perfectly with the axis of the screw and you're gonna get, it's just gonna chatter. So use I use square drive, because that was most readily available when I started. Now, if you go to uh, the big box stores and buy uh, uh, like deck screws and, and, and sheetrock screws, uh, a lot of them are a, a hex or a spline drive. Most of them, if you buy a, uh, a larger box of them, it will contain a bit for that screw that will fit this drill drive. Um, a, laser, a laser line device is very handy for lining up um, elements on your layout or laying out straight track. Um, this Black and Decker uh, laser level I've had for ew, 25 years. The, the item that Black & Decker has on the market t today is virtually identical, uh, which tells me that it's a good design if it's stuck around that long without, uh, without being changed. And one thing I found is that these levels that are on the case for lining up the line are actually fairly accurate. This also has a little disc with a point so you can stick it into the plasterboard on the wall and have this shoot a horizontal line along the wall. Um, it's probably not that handy for laying out bench work, but if you've got uh, photos you wanna line up on the wall, this will help keep them nice and level. The other thing is very handy if you're if you're mounting um, brackets for bench work on the wall is a stud finder. Um, I vaguely recall a few weeks ago there was a discussion about um, stud finders here on uh, on the new tracks forums. Um, the proper way to use this is you put this against the plasterboard away from where you think the stud is and you push the button and hold it, and it will usually beep or the lights will flash to tell you that it's, it's taken a reading. And then you slide it across the wall until uh, it beeps and these LEDs on it will, will light up and show you the edge. And the way I work is uh, I'll put a little strip of masking tape um, and I'll approach the stud from one side and I'll mark when it, when I get an indication, I'll mark it. And then I'll move it the inch and a half till I see the indication from the other edge and I'll mark it. And then I'll turn it off, move over to the other side of the stud, put it back against the wall, press the button again, let it recalibrate. And then I'll mark it again going in the other direction past the stud. So I get a reading going in both directions. So I have two marks for each edge of the stud. And and that is that makes for a very accurate location of your stud. And then this last bit is showing there's a here's a, a laser level that also shoots a straight line. Um, here is a Craftsman digital level that um, has the capability of reading out your, your grade in percent. Uh, this particular model is uh, 
I, it's, I think it's no longer available. But if you have a smartphone or a tablet, uh, this is my tablet. Uh, there are numerous level applications you can download. Uh, you have a very accurate level and it will also read out grade in percent. And it's a little hard to read, but it, it, uh, down here, it, it, it reads out the, uh, the slope or the grade in percent. Um, a cell phone probably be a little more convenient to use than a 10 inch tablet, but um, uh, that's all I had to, to demonstrate what it would do. And that's the end of that. If you any questions or comments. Well, I'll tell you, I love the uh, the stud finder. I, I've never tried the way you said do it. I just kind of randomly look for the studs, but the way you described it makes all the sense in the world to me. So thanks so much, Ted, for another- Can I, can I make a comment? Sure. This is John Beck, yeah. Everything Ted said is good, and my son taught me a new trick in addition to what Ted just showed you. He has a little magnet which he can run up and down the stud once he finds it, which will tell him where every screw is because the magnet will stick to it if it's a <laughs> screw or nail. So you don't accidentally hit the same screw or nail when you're trying to do something with it. Just use a little magnet and it'll pop right on every one of them. So you know where the stud is and where all the nails are. Fantastic. That's Thanks great. That. I bought Thanks an for attachment for my uh, cell phone and it actually looks through the wall and you just slide it along and it'll actually show you if it's a stud, a metal stud, a wire, and it shows you the picture or uh, plumbing. I'll be darned. Oh, it's, it's slick. <laughs>